Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel, Roxanne. Thank you for your comment. Um, and for other people, um, Precious Gemstone, thank you for your valuable comments as well. Anyway, um, thank you to all of my subscribers. And if you're passing through, please subscribe, like and share. I wanted to talk today about the EU and their concerns, especially the elderly of the EU, their concerns about um, getting onto the EU settlement scheme before um, Brexit. Now, the thing is, is that now Brexit has moved because remember, the deadline was the 31st of December. But now Boris Johnson has got in. It's the 31st of October. What's the implications for that for EU citizens? who are in the UK and who want to remain. Uh, there's a lot of EU um, citizens who are finding the, um, this, the actual scheme quite onerous. They reckon it's complex. It's, um, what do their words say? They call the word Kafkask. I've never heard that word before. K-A-F-K-A-E-S-Q-U. It means overly complex, illogical and daunting. Anyway, apparently a lot of them are finding it really, really onerous to complete the documentations. And some of them are resorting to the Windrush scheme. I'm not quite sure if it still if it applies to them, but it probably does, because a lot of people from the EU came over at that point. And the thing is, is that what they're saying is, or what the government or Home Office is saying is that, you know, as providing you complete the correct documentation, you are going to get your stay based on what you give, as opposed to the fact that you've actually been here all those years. So this is what's worrying them. And another thing is that, especially with the elderly, they like to see hard pieces of paper also. They have digital approval, so it means when they go for jobs or when they go to the bank, they've got nothing to show, no evidence. Now, from the Home Office's point of view, they seem to feel that providing it's digital, it can't get lost, and they've got records of it. I don't know if they then keep give a copy of the digital, digital um, certificate to the individual, but, you know, from what I'm reading... Um, I'm sure if they have the digital copy, they wouldn't be worried about what they can show. But then again, when you go to airports and you're looking at phones, a lot of these people want to see original documents. So I can understand their concern if everything is digitised and they haven't got the electronic. And I mean, pulling up a phone and showing them a, a document on a phone doesn't carry the same weight as if you have a certificate. So that's what their concern is. Um, I'm just going to read it quickly, um, just to cover most of the stuff. OK, citizens of the EU who want to stay in the UK after Brexit have become so disillusioned by the application process that they have tried to register under the emergency Windrush scheme instead. Applicants for settled status claim that the process is Kafkaesque, like I said, I explained what that meant, and many have raised concern about the Home Office's decision not to issue documentation at the end to prove they are allowed to remain in the UK. And I can understand that concern because, you know, everything is evidence, evidence, evidence. And it's fine saying, OK, it's going to be digital and it's on the system, especially when they are asking for original documents and they know the value of original documents. If it was OK to digitise such important information, why don't they accept digital documents? There's a reason for that. So I can understand their concern. Um, serious concerns about the design of the settlement scheme for EU citizens launched by the Home Office two months ago. So, you know, a lot of people are worried about it. There are an estimated 3.8 million EU citizens in the UK and those who want to remain after Brexit are obliged to apply for settled status by June 2021. So I'm just wondering with those dates because these are dates before Boris Johnson got into office as Prime Minister. 
So I'm wondering if these dates still apply. So if you're an EU citizen, you'll have to check out the implications now that Brexit is definitely, I believe it's definitely going to happen on the 31st of October, deal or no deal. And it's probably going to be no deal. So it's even more important that you secure your residency before the 31st of October. I mean, that's only what we're now, I think I heard somebody say 99 days or something. Anyway, committee members said the design of the scheme meant many EU citizens were at risk of forfeiting their rights to remain after the deadline. The prospect of a Windrush-style catastrophe happening to over 3 million EU citizens who have made the UK their home in good faith is deeply troubling, the committee said in a report, EU Settlement Scheme. The report comes as new statistics show 750,000 people have applied for settled status since the scheme opened. Among them, 100,000 of the estimated 1 million Polish people in the UK. The only way to ensure EU citizens are guaranteed to obtain their rights is to legislate. I don't know where I got this from. Hopefully I can find the link and put it underneath. We therefore call on the government to protect in law the rights of EU citizens in the UK the government should guarantee in law that an EU citizen living in the UK before Brexit are legal residents of the UK and are able to continue to live and work as they have done until now, says the report. So it is a bit similar to Windrush, really. Because if they, the thing is, is that same like the Windrush, if they haven't got documents to prove how long they've been in the country and the fact that they were li they've been living here for a certain amount of time, I don't know what's going to happen. Not learning the lessons from Windrush scandal probably did. Oh, I don't know what that is. That's just odd notes. I wasn't meant to read that. The problems faced by the Windrush generation showed how easily individuals can fall through the gaps in the system through no fault of their own and how easily lives can be destroyed if the government gets this wrong. Too many people, including children and vulnerable individuals, risk falling through the gaps and not accessing the scheme at all. The warning lights are there. Now the government must take action. What, I don't know what's preventing them from applying before the deadline. I mean, you know, I know that the um, document is quite onerous. I think it was 342 pages. But that's not all what you have to fill in. I think that tells you a bit about the scheme. I'm not quite sure how big the um, document actually is that you have to complete. I think the Windrush is eight pages. But that, that requires quite a lot of information as well and a lot of evidence. Anyway, um, he also said the government needed a printed document and not a digital system to enable EU citizens to deal with landlords, employers and officials at airports and ports. See, that's where it comes in. That's where it's very important. Like I said, it's fine to have these digital documents. Because, you know, when you're going out now to a show that, you know, you buy your ticket online, they scan it from your phone. I mean, that's the way we're kind of heading now. So I think, though, when you're dealing with especially officials at airport, that's when it becomes tricky because they haven't got time to be scanning and doing all that stuff. And everything, they're so worried about fraud and, you know, um, people using false passports and false identities. They want to see the original document. So I don't know how um, this digital document looks so that people know it's authentic. No bureaucracy in other EU countries. People are merely required to notify a town hall of their arrival and their address. The government has chosen to implement a system which does not grant status to eligible people, but requires them to apply for it. And the Home Secretary told us that EU citizens are only entitled to the status which they are able to evidence. 
whoever's, re who's whoever's wrote the report is saying, we disagree with this. We believe that EU citizens legally resident in the UK before Brexit should have their rights protected and their entitlement to remain enshrined in law, says the report. Ministers faced a furious backlash over the treatment of the Windrush generation after it emerged. Long-term UK residents were denied access to cancer treatment and other services, held in detention or removed despite living legally in the country for decades. So it looks like EU citizens, like foreign nationals, should prepare for a precarious future. The scheme uh, this, the Home Office says the scheme protects the rights of EU citizens in UK law and gives them a secure digital status, which, unlike a physical document, cannot be lost, stolen or tampered with. A, declar a declaratory system, that means EU citizens are not required to obtain status and evidence of this, risks causing confusion, especially for the most vulnerable and could in years come to find people struggling to prove their status. So I mean, systems change, systems break down, we're always having new systems introduced. How do they know without a hard copy of the certificate what's going to happen down the road? So I can understand their concerns, really. Home Office says we've taken great care to learn from the experience of the Windrush generation, it's part of the reason why there are 200 assisted digital locations across the UK to help EU citizens apply. Dedicated staff in our Settlement Resolution Centre and £9 million available for 57 organisations across the UK to support an estimated 200,000 vulnerable people. To apply. It just shows you that they know that the need is there. For them to put 900 um, million, sorry, 9 million pounds aside and increase the work, the work staff, and they know that 200,000 are vulnerable, they know there's problems with this system. Otherwise, why would this be in place? Anyway, for EU um, citizens watching this, all I'm saying is that now we know that Boris is in. We know that the deadline for Brexit is 31st of October. I have got a funny feeling, you know, people are talking about, oh, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. There's going to be delays. There's going to be delays. I don't believe there's going to be any delays. You see, with Boris... There is, they haven't, he hasn't got anything to lose. And that his um, government officials, they've got nothing to lose. The only people who have something to lose are the middlemen. And people like you and people like um, the people at the lower echelon. We're the only people who've got something to lose. So I believe it's going to happen on the 31st of October. I also believe that Boris is behaving in a way that makes it look as though he doesn't really know what he's talking about. I saw him in a, in a he was being interviewed and they were saying something about, oh, have you read Article A? And he said something about, oh, Article B. And then they mentioned Article C. And then they said, so what is, in, uh, what's, what is Article C? And he said, oh, well, it follows on from Article B. And they said, so, so what's Article B? Oh, well, it follows on from Article A. And then he said, so they said, so what does it say in Article A? And Boris Johnson says something like, oh, I don't know, I haven't read it. So what I'm saying is that kind of method of... Um, of an interviewee will give people the impression that he's not a serious person, that he doesn't know what he's doing, but please, he does know what he's doing. And I bet you one dollar, I'm not going to, I'm going to do one of those trading places bets, just one dollar, that it goes ahead on the 31st of October. And that's all for now. Bye bye.